tonight is leaders uh, empowering leaders, which is really uh, interesting because I think uh, if you're ever in a leadership position, you always, you know, don't even recognize that. You almost really think of yourself as a, a servant to a bunch of other people, and a leader is not necessarily the word you'd use to describe yourself. And I think most of the time, success comes to people that don't even realize it's actually happened. And, um, and in many cases, they don't realize it until the world tells them. And in so many cases, success is derived from just a multitude of things that were actually failures and that actually happened that were really hard. And I know personally for myself, that is the 100% truth. Um, the people that you go through things that are really hard with are the ones that you uh, remember as leaders. Lori Ann Goldman, um, you know, was honestly building one of the first uh, unicorns in Atlanta before there was even a word. Um, she has no, you know, particular cool horn about her or anything of that nature. But the reality is, she was the founding CEO of Spanx, um, like literally in a kitchen. And actually, I think kitchen was probably fancy at that time. <laughs> Uh, that was, it was like kitchen slash living room slash bathroom probably at the time and built it into a, uh, nowadays probably a multi-billion dollar brand. And, um, you know, Del Ross, who maybe some of you all know too, but, you know, helped lead one of the multi-billion dollar brands of IHG here. And then also one of the most, like the quietest uh, unicorns in Atlanta, a company called Green Sky Credit that you've probably never heard of but legitimately is probably arguably one of the most current, active, successful tech companies in all of Atlanta. And so I think one of the biggest questions that I have is one of the things that many of us uh, probably think about, or maybe never think about, is when was the biggest time you've gotten blindsided? So you thought you were actually really doing well, and then all of a sudden, you got slapped across the face, and you were actually either doing horrible or worse than that. But a time that you thought you were doing excellent. And I think self-awareness is one of the biggest things as leaders, but in many cases, you're, you're so heads down working on something and doing something that maybe it was relevant, maybe it wasn't, but the whole point was is that you simply got blindsided by it. I'd like to maybe hear from Lori Ann first and then love to talk about um, Well, a few things. First, let's have a round of applause for Insect Pool. I'm so excited to be here. It is, um, it's just been a great association. The second thing I want to say is please don't tell my children I was chugging a beer um, on stage because I would lose all credibility with my teenage boys um, if, if, uh, if they knew that. So, and, and I'm really glad that this is not a breakfast meeting and because I think you would be a more forgiving audience at a beer joint than you know, at a coffee in the morning. So we should be able to have some really good candid conversation. Okay, long side. The, the time that I remember the, the most kind of feeling blindsided was I was at Spanx and we were growing really fast. And so since I was a fan and CEO, Devin's right, I, I was, you know, at the company when I was a fifth employee. We were, um, you know, just about a year old. And my office was the kitchen, and it wasn't big enough to have a table, so we would have, like, a meeting sitting on the floor watching the ants crawl up the wall um, in the kitchen. And, you know, then we started getting bigger and hired people and hired people, and we're having success and going international and expanding brands. And so everything just seemed really good and working like crazy, like Devin said. And in one year, I think we hired like 50 or 60 people. And the blindsided moment was when I realized that I thought that all these new people really liked me a lot. <laughs> because you know, when, you, when I, I was so um, known to everybody's name, and I was so close to everybody, and you know, they were all people I was personally hired. And then when we started getting bigger, I realized that I really wasn't spending time developing between the new people and the old people. 
the old people were saying, you know, well, I've been here from the beginning, and I know exactly um, how things should be, and the new people started kind of forming their own clip, of saying, you know, these people have been here for a long time, and I'm open to new ideas, and I didn't see that developing, and I really didn't see my role in kind of unifying that in a really deliberate way, and so that was my my uh, blind side in this. I could tell you what I did after that, but we can use that for another question. <laughs> yeah, like maybe you could kind of talk about like kind of the hustle factor that led that obviously became a leader similar to 4 a.m. time. The, the hustle factor. Well, I mean, look, the way I look at it is success, <clears throat> for me anyway, has been about having a point of view, right? Having an, an opinion. Um, if, if you don't have, an, ideally, an informed point of view, then you're waiting for someone who does and you're going to do what they tell you to do, right? You're a follower. If you're a leader, you have a point of view. Now, having a point of view does not mean that you're omniscient. Do you ever allow yourself to think that you're omniscient? If I ever hear somebody say, and I've heard this before, I hear somebody say, I see things that other people don't see. I hear, I see dead people. <laughs> this is creepy. And it's just as creepy in business. You, you, but you, having said that, you need to have a point of view. You need to understand that. And then once you have it, if you truly have developed a, a, an informed point of view, you will not be able to help but spread that point of view, be able to express that, right? Be able to go out, and that's, I think, the underlying factor for hustle. You can't bear a world that doesn't have this revelation that, my God, we need something that helps us monetize Twitter. We need something that helps us uh, capture latent demand for uh, an e-commerce interface and display rates and, and, and availability that they couldn't get before. Whatever happens to Everybody says that all the time. All the time. Right? But it, that's really what it's about, is having a point of view. Okay? If, if you are super laid back and like, whatever, dude, I'll do it. Right? That's great. That is really great. And at some point, there's a company that needs you, because you'll do it. It's great. Whatever. Tell me what to do. But this audience is about, you know, came here because you want to hear something about leadership. Good leaders have a point of view, not an inflexible one, and no illusions of omniscience, but they do have one. And they will do anything to make sure that others understand it, to make that point of view sharper, and to make sure that they're right by making it happen. Talk about the times you were just wildly surprised at the amazingness of people and what they did and what they ended up doing. So we can't tell why we admire somebody. <laughs> um, okay, so people can surprise you. I have a few like advice things about you know hiring people. Um, the worst people that I ever hired were the ones that were absolutely fabulous in the interview. When I had like a perfect interview and four people interviewed them and everybody came to the debrief and said, oh my God, Mark was the great, oh my God, do you believe how fabulous he was? Those were the people that never worked out. And I think that the reason for that is because they were so good at self-promoting, they were so good at telling you what they wanted, you wanted to hear, that they maybe really weren't, you weren't getting the real thing. So I've, I, I've learned to, if somebody was really like that good, you know, it's too good to be true, it probably is, and you know, I, I've gotten burned by that. Um, but I've had like a lot of people that have just been huge successes. Um, one of the women that I hired uh, at Spanx, um, I got from the Coca-Cola company where I came from before, and I hired her, she had never managed anybody, and I hired her to be the controller of the company. Um, and Kim Jones is now the CEO of Sweetwater. And um, she worked for me for seven or eight years, and any challenge that I gave Kim, she just continue to take on and do really well. And you know, at the end of the year, um, I'm a geek on, you know, the first of the year I sit down and I, you know, write on a piece of paper the things that I'm proud of, the things that I want to do different, 
Um, sometimes it's, you know, a full PowerPoint presentation of all of these things, but sometimes it's just a, a list. And invariably on the list of things that I'm most proud of was always the people that just grew and, you know, met those challenges and to continue to exceed my expectations because they, you know, it wasn't me that was creating that, but to see that and witness that um, was the most fulfilling thing that I ever did. And I have, like, lots of stories of people like that, but Ken came to mind because I'm sitting in a brewery. <laughs> And so I pulled like an introduction to be able to sell the services to see who we are. I think, you know, uh, the, the point that you did mention is <clears throat> this whole, you know, differences, which of course I'm going to keep a close eye on my new president because he, he passed with flying colors, but uh, apparently I'm going to have to like, uh, I'm going to have to like make sure that we keep a uh, much closer eye on that. But uh, maybe, uh, Dell, you have some, uh, some thoughts as well on like, what surprised you the most? And I, I hate surprise, right? It's, but I've learned to hate surprise because surprises are usually painful. Um, they are, they often, often. Now this may also coincide with um, common surprise when you have young kids is stepping on their toys in the dark with bare feet. Okay? It's awful. There's nothing good about it. Being able to identify Legos by shape and color with your feet. It's bad. Um, so there's bad surprises, but again, yeah, they're almost always bad. For people, uh, it happens, you will make bad hires. You, you will, and that, that will happen. You'll know fast. You will know very quickly that the guy, the girl that you interviewed, that presented such a great package, ain't that, right? And you'll know it within 30 days. The biggest mistake you can make is not taking action on it, right? They will not change. At best, you can make people who are underperformers adequate. That's it. You need to know this. It's really important. And this is one of the things I learned from the dot-com days. You don't regret letting inadequate people go too fast. You don't. You don't regret pulling that trigger too fast. So, but I learned that again because you just want them to be good. Or you want them to be good. The tweet is, when should... Um, yeah, I'm not going to work for her, but the, um, <laughs> yeah, because I have to say, I think just about every boss I've ever had has had that thought. <laughs> then they're like, oh, it might be worth it anyway. So that's all right. um, um, no, I, I think that's the thing. Is that I, I, I'm so passionate about avoiding surprises. It's not that I'm not a risk taker. I love risk, but I like risks that I take. I don't like risks that other people take on my behalf, right? It's really bad. So I need to understand those things. Be decisive, but informed. It's, it's, a, it's a tough balancing act. It's one of the reasons why I'm so thrilled about big data. There's so many ways to know, but it's not about knowing everything before you decide. It's about knowing enough. So you understand what things you don't know, so when those things turn out to emerge and they're bad, we're well, not surprised. Okay, I didn't really know enough about that. Chalk it up, put it in the big book of knowledge, move on. Um, and I think you know a lot of what we've talked about on, on stage today is it, it is like one of the uh, things that uh, I get to talk about with uh, one of our, our senior leaders, our president. And I said like, look, you get to do all the work, and I get to give all the speeches. And um, I sent that to Lord Ann, and she goes, oh, I, I know that pretty well. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're giving a lot more speeches nowadays, too. And so the point simply being about that, though, is that the people on stage um, maybe deserve some credit. And as Lorianna said, that there's credit due. But a lot of that is deserved to the teams that support them and the ones that truly believe in them. So if we give a round of applause to Dell and Lorianna, it's also to the teams that they support. So thank you guys for coming out.